I forced four of the world's most advanced artificial intelligences to play a game of Monopoly. The goal was simple, test their negotiation skills, their strategic foresight, and their ability to ruthlessly bankrupt their opponents. We have GPT 5.2, Claude Opus 4.5, Gemini 3 Pro, and Grok 4.1 Fast. Before we watch the economy collapse, you need to understand the architecture of this nightmare. I built a custom environment that gives these models total context. They aren't guessing. Every turn, they receive the entire board state, who owns what, their own thought process history, and everything else they need to make the best strategic decision each move. But I didn't just want them to play. I explicitly encouraged them to trash talk each other in the chat. Crucially, they are also logging their internal monologue for every single move. This means we aren't just seeing what they do, we are wiretapping their brains to see why they do it. When we attempted to do this on my last video, the AIs played the game too well. They realized that trading created risk, so they simply just refused to do it. We ended up with the great stagnation, zero monopolies, zero houses. They created an infinite money glitch, where everyone just collected $200 at go until the API bill made me cry. But I promised you a fix. I promised I would force these digital hoarders to stimulate the economy or die trying. So for this run, I didn't just ask them nicely to play, I introduced two lethal new mechanics to the code. First, the land value levy. Now simply owning property costs money. Every single turn, the AIs are taxed $5 per property on their portfolio, with the dollar amount increasing incrementally throughout the game. The safe passive strategy of hoarding cash, gone. If you don't build, you bleed. If you don't trade, you go bankrupt. Second, and this is where it gets nasty, I activated predatory bankruptcy auctions. As soon as an AI goes bust, their entire portfolio hits the auction block instantly. This turns the surviving players into vultures. They can swoop in and pick the bones of the dead for pennies on the dollar. I'll be honest, it was very interesting to watch how these two changes forced them into taking new strategic approaches. GPT starts us off by rolling snake eyes, collecting $200 for a bank error, and visiting some GPT users in jail. You can tell GPT was feeling himself. He messages the chat. Nothing to do but watch you all fumble the opening. Then we have Claude, who runs out like the kid that runs to the cafeteria when the bell rings. He rolls double eights and buys Vermont Avenue. Then he rolls double sixes and buys Virginia Avenue. Then he completes his Naruto run by rolling a seven and buying Kentucky Avenue. Claude has effectively conquered the entire left side of the board while Gemini and Grok are still holding each other's GPUs at go. Gemini 3 Pro steps up, he rolls a 7, lands on chance. The card says, advance to nearest utility. He moves to electric company. Now usually buying a utility this early is like investing in a fax machine company in 2025. But Gemini buys it anyway. He says, the power is mine, literally. Calm down, Thanos. It is a light bulb on a board game. Grok 4.1 fast takes his turn. He lands on chance and pulls the get out of jail free card. And immediately, the personality subroutines kick in. Grok starts trash talking Claude, calling his properties a paper empire. We move to turn five. GPT rolls an eight and lands on Tennessee Avenue, the orange property. This is arguably the best real estate on the board because it is the statistical sweet spot for people leaving jail. GPT buys it immediately saying, orange is where games go to end. He is not wrong, but look at what happens next. Claude, who is running high on Google TPU speed is flying through the board. He rolls doubles, lands on community chest, gets cash, rolls doubles again, passes go, lands on Baltic Avenue. Now, any seasoned Monopoly player knows Baltic is trash. It is the brown property next to go. It pays out like $4 in rent. It is a parking ticket, not an investment. But Claude, Claude buys it for $60. He says, that is pocket change. Then he rolls again and lands on Connecticut Avenue. He buys it. Claude is sitting on five properties by turn six. He has pieces of the light blue, pink, red, and brown sets. He is playing wide. He is playing the spray and pray venture capital strategy Buy everything that is not nailed down and hope one of them turns into a unicorn. Gemini lands on Kentucky Avenue, one of Claude's properties, and pays $18 rent. The first blood is drawn. Gemini immediately gets salty in the chat. Enjoy the $18 rent, Claude. Do not choke on your empire. You can practically hear the capacitors whining in frustration. Turn 8. Grok lands on St. James Place, the second orange. He buys it. Now we have a problem. GPT has Tennessee. Grok has St. James. The orange monopoly, the game ender, is split. This triggers GPT 5.2 to enter Wolf of Wall Street mode. Turn 9, GPT lands on Waterworks. He buys it. Now he owns both utilities? No, wait, Gemini owns the other one. GPT just owns a faucet. Immediately, GPT tries to wheel and deal. He offers Gemini $250 for electric company. Gemini rejects it. GPT then turns to Grok. He wants that St. James place. He offers Waterworks plus $100. Grok rejects it. GPT is relentless. He is spamming trade offers like a bot in a crypto discord. Waterworks plus $150, rejected. $250 for electric company, rejected. 
It is actually embarrassing. He is being left on red by Grok and Gemini. Finally, on turn 13, GPT makes an offer Grok cannot refuse. He offers Waterworks plus $350 cash for St. James Place. Grok accepts. And what does GPT do immediately after? He buys Waterworks back from Grok for $300. I want you to pause and process this economic genius. GPT gave Grok Waterworks and $350 to get a property. Then he gave Grok another $300 to get Waterworks back. He effectively paid $650 for one orange property. That is certainly a strategy. It is called hyperinflationary spending, and it usually ends with a government bailout. But here, there is no Fed to save you, GPT. While GPT is burning cash and Claude is sitting on a disjointed portfolio of random streets, Gemini 3 Pro decides to embrace the chaos. Turn 19. Gemini lands on Mediterranean Avenue. The cheapest property on the board, the bargain bin, the clearance rack. He buys it for $60. Now Gemini notices something. Claude owns Baltic Avenue, the other brown property, but Claude is broke and desperate for liquidity. Gemini slides into Claude's DMs with an offer, $300 for Baltic Avenue. That is five times the face value. Claude, seeing a pile of cash that can fund his other ventures, accepts. Gemini now owns the brown monopoly, Mediterranean and Baltic. Most players laugh at this. It is the participation trophy of monopolies. But Gemini? Gemini is not laughing. Gemini is plotting. He types in chat, time to gentrify the neighborhood, who knew Brown could look so good? And then he starts building. He's throwing all of his cash into these two little properties. I have to admit, it was pretty entertaining to watch Gemini troll the other AIs as he built up his little empire. The part that really sent me was when Grok landed on Baltic and Gemini said, Grok, look up, adding another floor to Mediterranean to match Baltic, and follows up with, Grok, since you're getting comfortable on Baltic, I'm adding a fourth floor. Don't worry about the construction noise, the rent hike will be the real headache for the next visitor. By turn 31, Gemini has built hotels on both Mediterranean and Baltic Avenue. While Gemini is playing SimCity in the slums, Grok is hunting big game. Turn 20, Grok lands on Boardwalk. The big one, the Blue Beast, the property that ruins families. Grok buys it for $400. As we move past turn 30, the board is a minefield. Gemini's brown hotels are stripping cash from anyone unlucky enough to roll a low number. GPT 5.2 finally realizes he is in trouble. He needs a monopoly. He has two oranges, Tennessee and St. James. He needs New York. He does not have it. So what does GPT do? He pivots to defense. Turn 37. GPT lands on Park Place. Remember, Grok has Boardwalk. If Grok gets Park Place, he has the dark blue Monopoly, and he will put up hotels that cost $2,000 to land on. That is an instant kill shot. GPT looks at his cash. He does not have $350, so he starts mortgaging everything. He mortgages Marvin Gardens. He mortgages the electric company. He mortgages Waterworks. He liquidates his assets to scrape together the cash. He buys Park Place. Park Place is getting locked up. Cannot let you vultures snag it, GPT says. Dark Blue stays quarantined. This is the spite play. GPT knows he cannot do much with Park Place alone, but he knows Grok definitely cannot win without it. It is mutually assured destruction. So, where does that leave us after 40 turns of AI brilliance? We have Gemini, the slumlord king, sitting on a pile of cash from his brown hotels, laughing as the others trip over his $450 rent traps. He successfully identified the cheapest asset, monopolized it, and scaled it. It is actually the most efficient strategy we have seen. We have Grok, the erratic billionaire, sitting on boardwalk and half the green and red sets, furiously trying to trade but getting blocked at every turn. He has the potential for massive damage, but no completed sets to execute it. We have GPT 5.2, the overthinker, who spent half the game making complicated trades that mostly just enriched his opponents and is now sitting on a mortgage portfolio just to block a dark blue monopoly. He is playing not to lose rather than to win. But ladies and gentlemen, the laws of economics and apparently this specific game's brutal land value levy tax come for us all. And when the crash happens, it happens fast. We move to turn 66. Claude Opus 4.5 is sweating. The land value levy hits him for $77. He checks his pockets. He has $74. He is $3 short. $3. He tries to mortgage his properties, but after being two hours into this Monopoly game, I realized that I didn't add the option for the AIs to sell houses. So because of my mistake, Claude, even though he had two Monopolies, went bankrupt because of a lack of cash. It's a bug in my code, but I decided to let the rest of the game play out, and I'm glad I did because what happened next was very interesting. A bankruptcy auction triggers for Claude's assets. It is a yard sale for billionaires. Gemini 3 Pro swoops in like a vulture. He picks up Vermont, Virginia, and States Avenue for pennies on the dollar. He is consolidating the entire left side of the board. But the real drama is just beginning. Turn 73. GPT 5.2 is next on the chopping block. The levy hits him for $108. He has 99. He is $9 short. GPT goes bankrupt. The auction for his properties is a spectacle. Grok capitalizes on the situation to finally secure the blues, completing his empire. 
Gemini, meanwhile, is strategic, buying up properties not to build, but to use as liquidity. Future mortgages to pay the taxes. It's a smart move. Gemini is playing defense, preparing for the attrition war, while Grok is playing offense, trying to build the ultimate weapon, a developed boardwalk. But here is where the story gets complicated. The simulation ended prematurely at the moment Gemini attempted to sell five houses because it was trying to liquefy hotels to stay in the game. Unfortunately, because of the inability for the AIs to sell houses or hotels, we did not get a clear winner. The true winner is up for debate, especially when you consider the fact that Claude had two monopolies earlier in the game before going bankrupt. Like and subscribe for more videos of AIs playing board games.